In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take an overview of some of the enhancements now available in the motion tracking tool in PowerDirector. They've made some nice improvements and we'd like to highlight those in this tutorial. Let's start out with this video I have on track number one of a car moving down the road. We're going to apply several different motion tracking techniques in this video. So I highlight it and then click on the Tools button above the timeline. From the drop-down menu, I'm going to select Motion Tracker. That opens up my Motion Tracking window. You'll see one thing on the left side that's brand new under Step 2. The default for my system is AI-based tracking with better results. If your system can handle the new AI functions in PowerDirector, you'll also see this option and it will become your default. In any system, you can choose the option below it, which simply says track with faster speed. We're going to leave it on this default for this tutorial. So the first step is to figure out what I want to track. And so that's what the white box is for. I could track any area of contrast. I could track the red tail light. I'm going to track the license plate since it stands out against the blue of the car and make the box go there. Then I can select what I want to do as I track. I have three buttons on the left side. Each of them work independently of the other two. So let's take the FX to start with. I'll click on that and I notice that I have several options. If I look at the first drop down, I have mosaic, spotlight, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'm going to choose Gaussian blur and our mask can be a box which is a recti rectangle or square or it can be a circle or an oval. I'll leave it at box. And you notice the default is it puts it inside your tracking box. That's where I want it but in some cases I won't. Let me drag it out. I want to see exactly what the blur level is. Let's move it on top of the sign here and that's okay. Maybe I want to intensify it. If I do I move on the left side to my degree slider and I'll slide it over a little bit more and there you see the difference it makes. I'm going to resize this to about the size of the license plate itself and put it back there. Again I could blur anything on my entire clip. I don't have to blur anything that's right by the tracking box but in this case they work. So when I'm done and satisfied with what I've got I can click on the track button. I'm going to deliberately create a mistake and then I'll show you how to fix it. So I click on track and it follows the license plate as it moves away from the camera around the corner and the car moves behind the tree in the clip. So that's good. But watch what happens when I play this. Let's play and see. There I'm blurring the license plate but notice the farther the car gets away the larger the area of the blur. What's going on? There is something I wish they set different by default and if we go down on the left side the bottom area here says adjust effect size with the tracked object. Now, First of all I'm going to move this a little more to the left a little more on top of the license plate maybe even make it slightly smaller and I'll turn this on. What this means is now as the object gets smaller the size of this effect will get smaller. It will shrink as the car moves in the distance. I don't have to retract this to do this. All I have to do is change my settings and watch what happens as I play now is it only masks the license plate and not the back half of the car. That's a, that's a very important feature. Okay so I'm done with that. Now if I want to add another tracker to the same object I can do that but I have to track independently or replace. Let me show you what happens. Let's assume instead what I want to do is I want to put a for sale sign on top of the car. I'm going to click the T for title. Now it says are you sure you want to remove the attached object? So if, if my tracker is set up and running I can only use one of these options at a time. I can add multiple tracks with multiple options and we'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I'll say yes for now. So my tracking is still what it was but now I'm going to add a text. Let's say for sale and immediately it decides where it wants to put it and I can reposition it as I so choose. I'm going to put it directly above the tracker, center it above the tracker 
And then what I want to do is I can also change the font family. I can change the font size, the font color. I also can change backdrop. I like using that in this kind of a situation. But I need to click on the little triangle to the left of the word backdrop to see my options. I have a curved rectangle in the lips, rounded rectangle. I'll leave it at the default here. But I'm going to change the color to a two color gradient. And so we'll start, we'll start with a maroon. I'll click on OK from my color selector. And the end width, I'll do a bright red. Do OK as well. And it will change the gradient direction. And now I have my modified sign. Once again, I need to click all the way down to the bottom and check this bottom box. Otherwise, the for sale sign will stay the same size. But now as I play it, I don't have to retract it. It will shrink as the car goes down the road, getting smaller and smaller the farther away it is from the camera. So that's a nice one. So let, what if I want more than one tracker at a time? I can use multiple trackers. I can use multiple trackers on different objects moving in different directions at different speeds. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll just add a second to this one. Let's say we want to for some odd reason, add a sign on the back of the car. So what I'm going to do is click on Add Tracker. And I have to decide what I want to track. In this case, we're going to track the same object. We'll just put another tracker on the license plate. And then I'm going to click the middle option. Now this is media. It can be a still image. It can be a video. Let's click on this one. I can choose from my hard drive or my media room. Let's take something from the media room. I'll take this sign here, pre-summer sale. Click on OK. Again, it will decide where it wants to go. And let's make it larger. I want to, It will keep the proportions. Now, because it's a separate tracker, I have to retrack only that tracker. So I'll click on that. It will do the same thing it did before, so my second tracker is going to follow the same procedure. It'll be done here in a second or so. That's done. Now when I play this, I'm going to have the for sale sign and the image. But notice, I made the same mistake deliberately where I didn't tell it to resize. Again, to fix that, you simply move to that particular element, that tracker. Click on Adjust Effect Size, and now when I play it, it too will shrink as it moves down the road. Let's change what we put on the back end of the car. Let's actually stick on a video. So I'm going to click on this track. I'm going to click the center button again. Import media clip. And from the media room, let's take this video of the cyclists. You notice it will only do one or the other unless I want to add a third track. I can put that on the back end of the car. And now I actually am having a video clip playing within another video clip being keyframed all the, all the while because of my motion tracking. And there is the video clip. Once again, same mistake because I wish this were the default. We'll go Adjust Effect Size with Tracked Object. And now when we play this again, oh, it started out the wrong size. Let's go back to the beginning. Change the size and location of our box. And now when we play it, it will shrink along with everything else. Let's assume that this is what we want for some strange reason and then we'll click on OK. And then when we get back to our main screen we're going to find that PowerDirector has actually added both the title in the for sale and the video as, as tracks below my main track. And if I click on either of these to get into the PIP Designer, I'm going to see all this gold. Now the gold is basically lots and lots and lots of keyframes. It's gone through every second of the project and added a keyframe. And I can move into these keyframes, move from one to another. 
and I can delete them, I can move them, I can change them any way I want. It's a laborious process, but if you really want to tweak it very carefully, you can go in here and edit your keyframes to make adjustments on how the tracking has done. You can't go back and, and, and have these in the original tracker, but this is what it has done as it has assigned these keyframes to these particular objects in PowerDirector. Thank you.